Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the 52 cast. This is episode number three and I do apologize for it taking so long for me to get a new episode out. I have been a little bit busy but without further ado let's get to it. So at least once a day I get a DM asking a very specific question. Have I really been to the moon? It's a logical one considering the bio on my Instagram page and I honestly love getting asked it. It makes me laugh every single time and since a bunch of you have been asking about a video about little old me, here it is. As for the question about whether I've been to the moon, you're going to have to stick around a little bit longer. So full disclaimer, I'm not writing this from a lush new suite on Turkish Airlines nor am I backpacking through the Alapation Mountains with nothing but my moleskin diary and ironic tattoos. It's a Tuesday evening in middle class suburbia and I sit in my study slash laundry room slash storage area. I'm married with two and a half kids, I work an eight to five job and I drive a white sedan. I have been lucky enough to experience some amazing things in my life. But for the other 363 days a year, I'm perfectly ordinary, just like you. This video will set the stage for who I am, where I came from, and where I hope to go. So let's start at the beginning. It was a Monday in August of 1984, just like any other Monday. That was until the doctor slapped my butt and brought some air to my lungs and I can't really remember much of that day, but I'm sure that from that moment on, the cosmos rejoiced at the arrival of something special. You see, James Morrison was also born on that day, and 22 years later, he would go on to release the chart pop single, You Give Me Something. Now, at the same time, little old AB was stumbling his way through life with only one constant, art. I would draw and draw and draw and draw. Do you guys know um, Earthworm Jim? If not, look him up, he's pretty cool. Well, anyway, when I was maybe 10 or 11 years old, I got given a Game Boy and it had, the only game it had was Earthworm Jim. And I spent hours and hours and hours drawing and redrawing Earthworm Jim and I drew it so much that I could literally draw him while blindfolded with both hands tied behind my back and I guess the saying really is true that practice does make perfect although it might also make your parents think you have an earthworm fetish. Now you have heard some of this story already so let's skip ahead a little bit. The year is 2003 and I'm fresh out of high school. Mohawk, standing pride, punk rock socks pulled up to my knees. The order of the day was all things counterculture and I was so edgy I could insert a lame joke about my pizza cutting itself. I only listened to punk, everything else was lame and my art was heavily influenced by graffiti and counterculture. It was around this time that Banksy and Shepard Fairey were getting really big and so my art revolved around stencils and graffiti. I was in first year varsity and everywhere I went I carried around spray paint and markers and every bus stop and toilet store became the perfect place for some kind of witty remark or at least what I thought was wit at the time. I was in my first year of varsity studying graphic design and everything was completely analog. There wasn't a PC in sight and it was brilliant. Learning how to do a handmade typography with your own handmade calligraphy brush is equal amounts of amazing learning opportunity as it is incredibly rage inducing. Spending 20 hours creating an album cover where you have to paint it yourself and do all the typography by hand only to make a mistake on the last line will drive you insane. 
it completely formed the way that I look at art today. But I also hope, oh, I'm glad that I never have to do it again. It was amazing, but horrible. When I wasn't in, at college, I was working as a waiter, trying my best to keep ink in my pens, food in my fridge, and drinks lined up at the local bar. The defining moment in my college life came in my postgraduate year. Our task, should we choose to accept it, was to create one design project spanning the entire year of my fourth year at college. My idea was to start a clothing brand. And through the last three years and hundreds of cans of spray paint, I had come to stick with the slogan of question the given. As in stick it to the man and not take anything anyone had to say as the law. Question it, question everything and blaze your own trail. This slogan would, became, would become rather the name of my brand and later would even find its way onto my body as a tattoo. The clothing brand got off to an amazing start as I hustled my wares into every shop I could find which yielded some amazing firsts for me, such as the first time I ever saw a person walking down the street wearing one of my t-shirts. It was just incredibly mind-blowing. Or the first time I saw one of my stickers on the back of someone's car, I literally pulled over to take a photo. I couldn't believe that someone would place my art on their car. Like a car is something special. To put a sticker on it means that you appreciate that art as much as you appreciate that gift of a car. Over the years, Question the Given has been shortened to just The Given, and many would recognize that as still being my Instagram handle and even the site, the name of my, my personal portfolio site. So I finished out my postgraduate year and decided to pack up my entire life and move across the country. I had received a job offer at one of the premium fashion houses in the country, and so off I went. I moved from a city known as Durban to probably South Africa's most famous city, Cape Town. I was young and dumb and spent most of my money on partying, and after one year at the company, I decided I was so cool that I just resigned and became a freelancer. And thankfully, that company was willing to stay on as my very first client. So now I had even more time to be lazy and do stupid stuff. And the crazy thing was that this was a time before the internet as we know it today. So there was no way to promote yourself as an artist. Um, there was no Instagram. There was no YouTube there was, I mean, the internet was basically checking your email once a week. So there was even more time for PlayStation and partying and napping. Later that year, I headed off to go to work as a ski valet in America. Um, I stayed in Colorado and I did it for no reason other than to once again just pack up my life and feed my urge to travel. Winter X Games, Vegas, Disney, New York, I did it all and I did it my way. It was only some years later after getting married, having a kid and getting a permanent job that I realized my potential and actually started working to achieve things. Now, I will never regret anything in my life as I believe everything I did has led me to this point, but I do see those early years as some missed potential even though they largely existed at a time where it was far harder to hustle than it is today, without the link of, an in without the, link of the internet as a force to spread your own personal gospel. I can't remember the exact day, but there was a moment that I realized I could get anything I wanted just by applying my mind and working hard. And so over the years, I've had a lot of projects. I created a company which made skins for consoles 
and less than a year later I sold it for a considerable amount. Then I decided I wanted free video games and so I created my own gaming magazine. I wrote, designed and created a 100 page magazine completely on my own and I then sent it out to all the game publishers. I got them to send me review copies of games and I ended up, ended up putting out about six copies or six issues of the magazine and it got pretty big at one stage. I, I mean, I had several thousand downloads of the magazine every month and I actually made it onto like local um, gaming TV shows on, on the TV and while it was good, it was good. I got probably 200 free games out of the thing, which was the point. But I also realized along the way that I was incredibly insane to be putting that much work into something just so I could get video games. And at the end of the day, the video games became work. And so the project was abandoned. <laughs> then I decided that I really wanted a drone. And so I created a logo company. I worked out that I only needed to make 20 logos and I would have enough for the drone that I wanted. Now 20 logos came and went, the drone arrived, it was flown and I'm now on my second drone and probably over a hundred logos later. I still have the logo company, it's something that I really enjoy doing. Um, I charge very little for my logos and I actually do a lot of work for non-profit organizations and little startups that can't afford um, bigger, more expensive logo companies. So that's just another way that I really enjoy giving back through the creative talents that I've been so blessed to be given. At one point, I got really into the vinyl toy scene. I don't know how many of you really know like Kid Robot who make the really cool designer like graffiti vinyl toys. Um, but these helped carve a major plot line in my life. I got heavily invested in the scene and through it I was able to meet many, many really cool people that would help me form a lot of connections and over the years, I was lucky enough to participate in a number of shows around the world and it got me a foot in the, in the door at our South African design in Daba and into various magazines and things like that and it was really great and for a time it, it was perfect and then it was time to move on like with all things. I did 90% of these things while working a full-time job and running a young family. I have a self-value that if you're going to do something, you may as well do it 110% as the time being spent is being spent regardless. So you may as well put everything you have into it in order to get the most out of it. Which is how I went from being the junior designer at my company, at my current job, to the head designer, to the creative director in less than five years. It was and is the job that I still work and it's the job that got me into 3D as I did mention in the previous um, video that I made. The job is basically product design and at the time we were doing everything in Photoshop which is actually just insane when you think about it. I don't know how people are doing product design using nothing but Photoshop my daily driver has become 3D and it has completely revolutionized the way I do my job. And that is basically how I went down a new path and a new road and where Blender 52 came about. My journey so far in Blender has been short. It's only been about two and a half years since I first opened the app and I continue to learn new things every day. And these are things that I can hope to continue to be able to pass on to you as helping others to learn and grow is something that I'm really passionate about. I believe I'm really lucky to have been given some natural talents and I think it's only fitting that I 
use them to be able to help others. By now, most of you should already know how Blender 52 came to be. What started as a personal New Year's resolution quickly has become a dedicated group of aspiring three artists around the world. And Blender 52 has not only allowed me to reach my own personal art goals, but has also allowed me to meet many of the biggest names in 3D around the world and being able to build a rapport with them over the last one and a half years has really been something great. I can pop off an email and know I'm going to get a response and that's actually just so cool. Um, it has been just an incredible ride and it's a testament to what hustle and dedication can reap. Beyond the lessons and dedication, this video was meant to be about me as a person too, and I have come a long way since my punk days. Instead, today, I, uh, I have one of the most diverse tastes in music you are likely to ever find, and I realize now how silly it was to limit myself to only being into that one hardcore genre of music. Um, at the end of the day, no one cares how super edgy you are or how niche you are. You, the truth of it is that you are only spouting yourself. You are limiting yourself to things that A, you might enjoy and B, things that might actually broaden your perspective on things. Beyond that, I have a diverse range of interests. I love video games and geeky things like Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering, but I'm also a gym rat. I love all sport and I will be buried in my Sharks rugby jersey one day. I love being outdoors, going hiking, going 4 by 4 and when I get the chance, there are few things that I enjoy more than travel. P.S. I think at the beginning of this video, I said that it was a Wednesday evening. It's now actually a Thursday morning about three or four weeks later. And that's purely just because A, writing is difficult, but also it's harder still under the pressures of life and limited time. My kids have interrupted me approximately 9,362 times during the filming of this video and three times alone during the filming of this sentence so it can be tough to get stuff out there but so long as you're dedicated and you remain committed to what it is you want to achieve you will get it done and you'll put it out there for the world to to see as for how i got to be the 34th man on the moon it's a basic lesson in marketing it's a manufactured hook built to draw you in and it works Every time someone sends me a message asking me about it, it's a new potential connection. It's a possible future business partner. It's a possible future endeavor or idea. For the record, only 12 people have ever landed on the moon. But who knows? I still have plenty of time. Thanks for watching. I really enjoy filming these and making these, so I hope you enjoy watching them. Stick around because I do have another one planned. Until next time, cheers.